This is Ben Gillespie interviewing Tyrone Whedon, an artist at Make Studio at his home in Baltimore, and Stefan Belschmid, Associate Director of Make Studio at his home in Washington, DC. It is August 10th, 2020, and this is the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Art Pandemic Project. Tyrone, could you tell me a little bit about how your work and life have changed since March of this year? Uh, well, um, I remember the last time I go to May Studio that um, I did finish up the to Tori Morrison piece and I did doing the, uh, the fashion show. And then um, going to Master Mutant with my family uh, for my late mother's birthday. And then came back from Master Mutant the pandemic begins. And my office uh, and my job is closed, but um, I still contact with my boss. You know, staying home, it was, it's a little stressful, it's, it's hard sometimes. But I gotta learn to think positive. Do you find that you have more time for art at home, or is that um, how are you occupying your time at home? Well, it takes uh, a lot to get used to it, and um, I've been doing a lot of art at home. I've been uh, drawing just reading books, watching movies, uh, and everything. Have you found something especially compelling in, in 2020? Is there a, a subject matter that you've gravitated to? Well, mine's right now for doing some Black Lives Matter pieces. I tried to draw all the victims that was um, killed or shot by police officers and uh, put everything on a sketchbook. I tried to put them as many as I can and then use a big piece on the, on the artwork. Could you tell me a little bit about the collaboration um, you made with Melanie Sanderson? Melanie Sanderson's Oh man, I'm I'm sorry. I, I tell totally you, forgot. Could you uh, um, ask the art therapy uh, student at um, a Notre Dame, Maryland? We could ask Stefan about that too. Yeah, you can ask Stefan. Yes. So, so I think you know. Um, I think it was about the the collaboration with other artists. I think Yaragi may have been part of it, and it was. I think it was an, you may have been in touch or worked on it with an art therapy student. Okay. Which, that was her name. And so, you know, I think you were interviewed for a, a quote. Do you remember any of that? It would have been in the last few months. And then your quote was being used in like a video. And then like, I think Yaragi made a, made a, a comment and a couple of other folks. So that was, uh, that's what you're being asked about. It was basically, I mean, that was sort of a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Was there anything that you sort of remember about that that sort of stood out to you? A quote. Well, just, you know, talking to that art therapy student about it, like working on that collaboration, is there anything that you remember? That, that you enjoyed or that meant that was meaningful to you? Um, I absolutely enjoy it. It's very therapeutic. Okay. Um, well, Tyrone, as you're, as you're reading and working at home, um, has, what's been your favorite thing that you've read or what has made you feel the most engaged? 
during this time? Um, I watch uh, black documentaries about about um, police brutality, including uh, 16 shots. And uh, we are understanding about Black Lives Matter. But right now, um, my focus on the book called How to Be Anti-Racist. Uh, and everything. Well, what do you miss the most about your pre-quarantine life? Oh, to be honest, I totally miss having conversations with, with everybody. I miss um, having lunch together with uh, with the artists. and doing so much hard work. Yeah, but, it, but it's kind of really depressing and sad. Well, it's a good thing to have a conversation uh, with my family in the phone number. But this is my second time for using Zoom since the uh, have a conversation with uh with people. And how are you staying in touch with your family, friends, colleagues, other artists you've worked with? Uh, is it mostly through Zoom? Yeah, I do a conversation with uh, my family by phone calls and do some text uh, to uh, my colleagues. Yeah, it's a very different connection, though, versus seeing someone in person. Yeah. Um, well, Stefan, I'd like to ask you a little bit about Make Studio. Could you tell me about the, the challenges that Make Studio has faced during the pandemic? Sure. So um, one of the main so the main challenge sort of right off the bat was was how can we stay in touch with, you know, with our 30 some artists. Um, uh, and we're still kind of working out challenges with, with a few of them, you know, who are limited with their internet access and that, that sort of thing. Um, basically, we spent the first few weeks uh, of the shutdown working on retooling what we offer the artists. Um, and so I think in April, we basically had sort of a skeleton that allowed us to, to reconnect with everybody who was interested via Zoom. So we, we kind of started, you know, and it's obviously not the same as a regular studio session where um, I think the nature is, was, is, was different and, and just like a normal studio day at Make Studio is usually six hours. So when we started with those sessions, we basically worked on two and a half hours um, and kind of getting every, helping everybody get back into the groove. So that was, that was the one side. The other one was to basically work on ways to provide the artists with materials and supplies that they needed. So one of my colleagues, Terry actually is on an ongoing basis taking orders and requests from everybody via text message or email. Um, I think in, in Tyrone's case, since Tyrone has been a little bit apprehensive about Zoom, but he's getting into the groove, which I'm very happy about. So I think he's gonna try and have regular art check-ins with me at least. Um, but Terry has, has been supplying him with uh, reference images if i'm correct right tyrone true yeah so uh basically i think you have been sending terry images that she is then going to print out for you on on our studio color printer because that's how you like to work like you like to have printed out visual references 
for your for your art. Yes. Um, and especially since you work a lot with, with portraiture, so uh, uh, there was a lot of ground to tackle, especially mm -hmm. with the nature of the pieces that you just mentioned, like, you know, pieces around Black Lives Matter, you know, remembering, you know, yes. people like, like George Floyd and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you, you have shared with me some of the initial sketches via text. Yes. Which is how we've been staying in touch. So, yeah, we're using every channel at Make Studio that we can to to stay connected with the artists who may not regularly go on Zoom. And that's been working pretty well. Like everybody is pretty much has a a cell phone or you know or is on, on email. Or um, even a laptop. Oh yeah. And we that's it's also been a way for us to actually collect art that has been finished. Um, because we're still adding new artwork uh, to our online shops. Um, and it's been, you know, given that we haven't had any traditional uh, exhibition opportunities, uh, we've been selling art regularly since, since March, basically, uh, which has been encouraging. Um, so that's it basically for the, for the artists in terms of just keeping something that resembles studio activities going. Uh, the other piece is at the moment, just just moving forward with exhibitions. Um, we have since, since we had to um, stop our regular operations, we've had since mounted three exhibitions. Uh, two of them were completely online. Tyrone was actually one artist featured in a, in a two artist show with a, a local artist who, ex who basically makes art with makeup paint. Um, and that's been pretty great. Um, Her name is Gloria. Yeah. And uh, currently still we've had, uh, the show is coming down, I think at the end of the week of uh, five make studio artists, women artists, who were who teamed up all you know, remotely through online uh, sessions on Zoom with five um, women artists that were Sondheim applicants, and so so they worked on on art collaborations around voting and like you know the anniversaries of, of women's suffrage, but also the Americans with Disabilities Act. And, and that's been, to me, really gratifying to see that happen, just how, you know, it's still possible to, to work on our projects and maybe try to have at least a small physical portion thereof. Um, but that exhibition has been, has getting local attention, which was really nice to see. Um, and at the moment, um, we're already planning our next invitational um, show, Cordially Invited, which where we feature art by uh, progressive art studios such as Make Studio that uh, nationally and internationally. And so this, we've had an, an online component of that in previous editions. And so this year, I think there may be a very limited physical portion for, for domestic programs, but the majority of it will also be online. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're making, basically making the best we can. Uh, we're, you know, uh, working on sort of limiting the financial damage uh, and, and surviving as a nonprofit. Um, but so far we've, we've been managing pretty well, I would say. That's wonderful. Uh, could you tell me a little bit, have you noticed that artists have shifted mediums or subject matter over the course of 2020? Um, it's been, it's, it differs from artist to artist uh, because everybody has a different workflow and it's, it's a different, it's, it's different for me to, you know, to respond to their workflow or to in some cases keep them motivated because you have you know i with certain folks um 
I have to think about, you know, managing fatigue, for example, like midday fatigue and things like that. I mean, that's obviously easier to do in person than, than virtually. But uh, with one artist in particular, we kind of do a lot of, I don't want to use the term stream of consciousness, but I basically come up with, with ideas based around things that, that interest him at, the, at any given moment. And we actually have a back channel that we use for that with, with texting images back and forth while we're on a Zoom call. Because this, we've usually, we usually have between like two and six artists on, on one, any one session. Um, so that's, that's like one example. Another one is uh, where one artist is coming up with all these really interesting uh, theme mashups, as he calls it. So we've had things we there was a mashup project around um, Greece and hairspray as the, the musicals being sort of mixed together. Another one currently is um, Doctor Who and the next the upcoming third Bill and Ted movie. <laughs> um, so I think for for the most part, I would say everybody is kind of sticking with, with their preferences. Um, of course, the, the virus is, is a subject matter and it has come up in, in certain pieces. Um, but I think for the, for the most part, it is possible, which is something that, that I'm very interested in. Like, I'm, you know, even with these challenges that we're having at the moment, I'm, I'm trying not to, to sort of fall back into the mode of teacher and teaching a class because really that's not what the what a regular studio day looks like. Like everybody makes their own subject matter choices, and then I, as one of the staff, is basically there to, to provide support as needed. And so, I mean, that's sort of one of my main motivations to kind of keep that going as as best as possible. And Tyrone, I wanted to ask a little bit, do you, how, can you envision how your work might change as you're reading How to Be an Anti-Racist and um, continuing under quarantine conditions? Do you feel, um, what sort of subject matter comes from that for you? Um. My focus is on to be a, a better person. That's something that I'm working on. Treating people with respect. Learn how to uh, appreciate life as it is. That's what I'm doing. I have a quick question for, for Tyrone because I think it would, that's sort of a, a good question to have because over the years we've been working on, you know, kind of helping you come out of your shell a little bit more, like, you know, kind of taking a step forward in, in, in public, which is what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But what, what would be interesting to me, Tyrone, is I'm wondering, do you think that once, once everything's sort of back to normal and we can interact, do you see yourself coming, being a little more forward with others? Or do you think you're just kind of gonna continue to be a little more reserved? A little reserved. Okay. That's how I put it. Yeah. And I had to learn how to come out my comfort zone in Zoom that I'm doing right now. Yes, it's been a process, but uh, we're in the middle of that process and it's happening. Well, I'm very happy to be part of that process. And so, by way of wrapping up, I'd like to ask both of you, what are your hopes for the future for Make Studio going forward from this moment in 2020 and beyond? You go first, um, Tyrone. Sure. Um, learn from the past, um, learn something from the, the pandemic about how you grow how you um, 
communicate with your family members. And mental health is very important. Uh, take your skills to a whole new level. And most importantly, be yourself and also love yourself. That's I think it. That was, that was pretty great. I think it, it touches on a lot of things that I was going to say. Um, as one of the, the founders of Make Studio, I, it, it was sort of, I sometimes think back because we just, we celebrated our 10th anniversary just a few weeks uh, before we had to close down uh, with a fashion show that Tyrone had mentioned. And that was, everything was just really great. Everybody had a great time. And then we had, what, a couple more weeks after that. And then it was time to close down. So I think my hopes are that uh, we will emerge of this um, stronger and better than we were before. Sure. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, I think that we, we will be able to value our friendships and acquaintances that we've made through Make Studio. I think, you know, I think there will be a new dimension to that, I would hope. Um, yeah, I think those are my, those are my hopes to, to make that happen or to, to kind of, yeah, return with the same force that we, we had before because, and here talking to the artists, that's, that's what most of them, most of us really wish for right now. Well, thank you very much for speaking with me. Always happy to, to hear about the good things in Charm City. Um, yeah, and that concludes our session today. Great. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much.